Hi everybody, welcome to the monthly art journal vlog. Uh, welcome back <laughs> if you haven't been on my channel for a while because I was on hiatus and didn't do the art journal vlogs for uh, I think it was June, July, August. I'm not sure about the June though. But I think it was June. Anyways, I'm back. I worked a lot and I did art journal pages this month and this uh, vlog here is pretty much me summarizing the month and if you're interested in how any of those pages came together there will be um, the links to the accordant videos in the iCard or also on the playlist on my channel. So let's get started. I'm not going in order, but because I have two books that I work on um, throughout the year, I'm going book by book. So this was week two, actually, and this is the August prompt from the journal workshops, which was Windows and Doors. Now, <laughs> if you know me, I'm really into books, into stories and into fantasy, thriller, science, history, any, any kind of genre pretty much. There's only horror that I'm not really reading, but all the other genres that I, is what I like. So I picked one of the genres from the books, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, you can pretty much recognize it here if you saw the movies or any stills from the movies. So I decided to make a Hobbit hole with a door just because I really like the round shape. It's cute and I made a door uh, with uh, different kinds of media. So I mainly used Tombow markers, with, which is a watercolor marker and uh, just some uh, permanent marker, a tiny bit of colored pencil but really not that much and I created this page by gluing two pages together having a tiny piece of a path into whatever adventure you're going with or whatever you associate with that very well simple or uh, well it's a kind of painting that you can interpret anything pretty much that you like into into this part. So I went with something uh, very loose, very open to interpretation for the painting on the second part or of the one that what that's what happens when you open a door. You can go inside into maybe... Um, a fantasy world like inside your mind inside your imagination or you can go outside and actually walk what whatever you interpret it with this one um, so made this tiny sweet page and this is more of a well very very bright very happy kind of page here so this was the only one that I made in this format I seem to uh, have preferred the other format and I'm just gonna get the second book. Hold on. There we go. This is the second book which is just the portrait format. It's pretty much the same book. I just turned things around here. Um, and I seem to have liked to work in this format more this month. Um, this one here is actually the first September page, which was, I think, June or July prompt of the journal workshops. I'm not sure. I caught up pretty much. Um, no, I think it was June. So this one here is called Picking Up the Pieces, and the reason or the theme for that page was to take an old painting, cut it up in a puzzle and do something with it. So I took one of my old ones and I kept the part that I really liked about the painting and did cut up most of the rest of the painting and just have it in this huge mountain here or 
pile, I should say, of different kinds of blue and green pieces of the parts that I really didn't like how they turned out. And uh, all that I did was work a tiny bit with permanent markers and ink and watercolor in the background to bring this piece together. This was one of the first pieces that I did after my hiatus and where it was me still or me still being in the stage of getting back to artwork, getting, getting used to compose pieces, to do things, to well, just handle material and stuff like that. It's really fascinating to me how quickly you can, well, well, not forget how it's done or how it feels, but not getting as used or comfortable with certain things of doing artwork. It's, it's really amazing. It, I had hiatus for two months and I felt like a total beginner getting back to doing artwork again. So this is way less sophisticated as other paintings that you will see later on. Um, the next page that I did for for the um, for the month was the July prompt. Like I said, again, I was catching up. It, it, it was a tonal page. And uh, the prompt there was to maybe use a color that you don't use at all. Well, there's no color for me to, that I never use. I just use different kinds of colors when it comes to focal points or having them as the dominant color. And then there's the so-called secondary or supportive colors, which I think is green in my case. And then there's color that I make myself use like different shades of purple or bright pinks, for example. So uh, I chose green because I, I like it enough, but I don't really use it as the main color or the only color in pieces. And uh, created this very simple, very, well, deco art-ish kind of uh, painting here with all the media that I have, acrylics, uh, pastel chalks, watercolors, ink, uh, different kinds of markers, and I used the green of all of those and made this very simple, but I think to me very pretty kind of page. Um, yeah, nothing really said more, more to say about this one. Now, this one here is way later or was done way later in the process of doing artwork. I was doing artwork daily for I think two weeks when I started doing this page. And I think there's way more, um, well, depth or sophistication in the page than it was in the picking up the pieces, for example. But uh, this one was actually really easy to make and very simple to make. Now, the this was the September prompt, which was back to school, and I had a tiny bit of struggle there, like thinking back to school time, not my favorite time. I liked school, I liked learning, I didn't necessarily like how students, well, behaved with each other or that kind of um, stuff. Where, not necessarily bullying, but uh, judging people um, in a way that is really cruel. And children and uh, teenagers are very, very skilled when it comes to, well, judging somebody else in their age, other than maybe adult people are where they might have a filter or a bit, a bit more of, um, well, manners. Uh, children are a different kind of story. And I think teenagers are the worst. And I didn't always experience the uh, happy side of going to school with other children or other students, other teenagers. But I really liked different kinds of subject, different kinds of teachers in school. It's not that I didn't like to learn or found it boring like all the time. Just like any other kid, I 
hated school for the subject or the teachers too, but uh, the older you get, the more you can work around that. So this was my first page and uh, it's because I really liked physics in school. I had a lovely and really great physics teacher who reminded me in just re regarding his style of teaching and of course the subject too. He reminded me a lot of Richard Feynman who I thought or I still think he was a great human being, a great teacher and just a curious mind and a very very likable too and my physics teacher had quite the same style in teaching that like I w when I saw the uh, lectures of uh, him teaching at university I thought wow if I didn't if if there if it wouldn't be another language like my teacher, of course, schooled me in German and not in English, but if it wouldn't be another language and um, another, I know it's another person, I would have thought, wow, this is, that, that's my old physics teacher. It was really the same style of, well, passing knowledge to somebody, making somebody be curious about things. Um, that could be really mathematical and dry, but it was so interesting and I really always looked forward to have physics class back in school. So Feynman also being an artist, or he was an artist and also a musician, I thought, wow, let's, let's just take him because he represents or he reminds me so much of my own physics teacher, but put him into an artsy... Uh, way like paying homage to him being a painter and a musician as well that's why he's so colorful and so well artsy looking and um, I really liked working on this page this was a lot of fun and uh, done with acrylics and watercolors and a tiny bit of colored pencil that's all nothing nothing fancy here but I really like the outcome now there was another subject slash teacher that I admired for a totally different reason and uh, he taught one of my favorite other subjects which was geography so I made two pages for the September prompt because I couldn't decide which one of those had more of an impact on me so I took them both and uh, my geography teacher in the last school that I ever went to, I actually had my um, first job training together with uh, the last part of uh, school. So I had a, a combo going on, working while doing um, your diploma. And that teacher here, it was not only geography that he taught, not like in middle school or something, but he incorporated a lot of politics and, uh, well, study of societies, cultures, uh, history and religions. So it was all mixed uh, with not only looking um, at where is the highest mountain on earth and what countries where on the planet but he incorporated way more into it and therefore especially for me made it way more interesting so i thought for uh well just representing what he actually taught i'd make a globe and use a card from my school book for my geography school book which uh, you can see here at the globe. This is Africa or parts of Africa, actually. And uh, I just made that globe with um, acrylics on top, a bit of gesso and a tiny bit of pastel chalk. Nothing fancy when it comes to art medium, but I think it looks really great uh, when you, like, I really like about media that if you, um, well, compare paintings where you have the same media or pretty much the same media that you use, how different they could look, how different 
um, the texture could be, how different the feel of a page or a painting could be. So I really liked how the acrylics uh, worked with this one in comparison to the Feynman painting, for, for example, or the tonal page, it's also acrylics there. Um, so I really liked that. Now, why I liked that teacher was because he was uh, challenging me. So him and me, we are at the opposite ends of the whole spectrum when it comes to what we believe is uh, the right way to think about how societies would evolve, how cultures would form. So I'm way more on the end of it takes time for society to evolve and every society should have the right to do that on, the, on their own and in their own speed. There might be things that uh, we in the rest of the world might not agree with, but uh, I think it's wrong to force, uh, for example, the Western way of thinking what is right, what is just, on other societies that evolve totally differently. And uh, without going into too much depth here when it comes to current politics, like, for example, Western world versus uh, maybe the Middle East or maybe, let's say, Russia or the Asian uh, way of things. So I think every society should have the right to evolve on their own time. And he was more like... Um, but we got to bring them the good stuff, like democracy or, I don't know, women right, uh, votes, uh, the women's rights for vote, voting or whatever it was. So we always butt heads him and me, and really not in the pretty way. We were very respectful of each, of each other, me being like 18 and him also being an adult. So we didn't go at each other without manners, but... We argued a lot, pretty much every lesson. Now, the thing that he did, and that's why I still actually admire him for what he did, and that's why he had such a big impact on the way I do discuss things and handle agreeing or disagreeing with somebody, is he didn't just say, well, my opinion is the right one because I'm the teacher. But he actually listened. He might not say, okay, you are right, but he listened and he really had an honest and earnest discussion with students, with teenagers. And it wasn't just me who disagreed with him, others did too. And But him and me, we were farthest away when it comes to the spectrum of things, you know? So uh, I find it really funny that even once in a while he was so mad that he left the classroom maybe 10 minutes early before the lesson finished. Sometimes I did, and that was fine. We, it's not that we hated each other, but we really pushed each other's buttons when it came, came to exactly these kind of topics. Now, when... We had our graduation party. Uh, him and me were sitting on a table at one point on that evening. And I still remember that he asked me, so what are you going to do now? And I said, well, I'm going to um, have a second, uh, well, second way of having a training. Like I was uh, starting to work in a bank, but when you do that, you got to go to school as well for a couple of hours a week, blah, blah, blah. So it was the same school that I had to go to. And he rolled his eyes so bad and said, you know, uh, don't take this the wrong way. But I'm very happy that I don't teach those classes and that we don't see each other again. And I was, yeah, likewise. <laughs> so we just had a good old laugh about it. And um but uh, he, he just really stayed very present in my head uh, that I think he was very courageous with the way he taught and um, that, well, he was brave in, in my mind for allowing 
these kinds of discussions that we all had during those two and a half years of him being my teacher, uh, that he allowed for those discussions and did not just go straight to the plan and this is what I got to tell you and tomorrow it is this and the day after is it is that and that topic. No, he really uh, adjusted the um, the curriculum pretty much to the class and I really, really liked him for that, for being so brave uh, in a very well strict system of schooling kids. So um, yeah, that page pretty much is my way of remembering that that subject, that uh, teacher, and just the the way that well he he made an impact pretty much. So yeah, that was September. Ta-da! There is lots of stuff, uh, lots of empty pages. I should actually say, lots of empty pages for um, October. And I'm really curious of what I will come up with. Uh, there's probably going to be one or two pages in regards uh, to the Spiel, which is the board game trade show, one of the biggest ones. And uh, it's taking place early October and I can't wait to go there and meet friends from all over the world and, well, just enjoying a couple of lovely days together and playing games pretty much so one or two pages will probably be about that and uh, yeah so that's that's the vlog that was the month and uh, I thank you very much for watching if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and uh, I like I said I have iCards and also playlists for all the videos of the pages that I did this month and if you're curious and you want to see them just either click on the cards or uh, go to my playlists and there is the art journal narrated one. That's where all of those pages are. Um, I thank you very much. Uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe if you feel like it. I very, very much appreciate that. And I'm going to see you end of next month with the new uh, art journal vlog. Take good care until then. Maybe you have some time to do your own art journals or uh, create something else, knit something, uh, sculpture something, paint something, draw something, doodle maybe, <laughs> I don't know, do some artwork. Uh, have fun with it and take good care. Bye.